Hey Vinyl community, Diana here. I'm back with another on recent rotation. Uh, I'm just showing some of my recent editions and with my contest drawing. Um, my 1000 subscriber contest has finished and um, thank you for all the awesome contributions. Um, it made me really happy to see all that and um, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today but uh, I just wanted to do the drawing and then I thought if I want to do it in VA anyway I'm, I'm going to show some records. So this time say hi to uh, John and Alice, Cold Rain, recent copy painting. So uh, let's just hop right in into the recent editions and then I will be uh, do the cutter drawing. Uh, the first one is one I found recently in one of our local record stores and uh, this is Cecil Taylor unit structures. Um, the album he made in 1966 on Blue Note. This is the second press from 1967. Uh, he's joined here by Eddie Gay, Stevens Jr. on trumpet, Jimmy Lyons on alto sax, Ken McIntyre on alto sax, Oboe and bass clarinet. Cecil Taylor is playing piano and bells, uh, Henry Grimes is on bass, Alan Silver is on bass, Andrew Cyril is on drums, and yeah. I don't think I have to say that much about uh, this free jazz classic. Um, it's intense and wild and very ferocious and I'm pretty happy to finally have this in the college. <laughs> one I instantly fell in love with it the first time I heard it and that's Comme à la radio uh, Brigitte Montaigne and Araski with the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Um, originally released in 1969 over Sarava Records. Um, this is the, Fusa, Fu, this is the uh, 2013 um, Superior Reactive Pressing. And yeah, I absolutely love this. Um, the avant-garde compositions and vocals of Brigitte and Areski uh, go perfectly in hand with the superb playing of the Art Ensemble of Chicago. This is just a uh, powerful and sultry and playful and compelling and um, I just kept uh, coming back and back to this record just always choosing this to play because um, I just love it so much. The next one is a more recent release, Spirit Fest self-titled album uh, released over more music. Uh, this was actually brought to my attention by the F Reverend while he entered my contest with, where he just showed his three uh, most played and most important albums of 2017 and this was one in the list. This is a super group formed out of the Japanese duo Tennis Codes together with some members of the Notwest, the German independent ambient band I would say. So Christopher presented this record and after I watched this video I was sampling like two songs and instantly wrote it and uh, haven't regretted it because it's just a great record. 
Um, the lyrics are part in English and part in Japanese. And we have uh, vocals on here and piano, melodica, guitar, uh, keys, um, bass, banjo, um, drums, harmonium, uh, percussion, tapes, stones, toys, vocals, bow, electronics and drums, and trombone, and bass drum, and head climp. Yeah, and it's just a really gentle and quirky and precious frail album, um, which has so much intriguing and gentle songs on it. Uh, I will need to drop it so you can hear it because it's hard to describe but um, it has grown really close to my heart in the last few weeks. This, uh, if you know my channel, I have been talking about this record so many times and that, it's, that it is one of my absolute greats. And, and I'm so happy to finally have Alice Coltrane's Journey in Sachi Dananda featuring Ferro Sanders in my collection. Um, this is second press from 1972. Uh, um, recently stumbled, uh, I recently stumbled over it for a great price and uh, even though the record has slight water damage, um, the um, the run itself plays perfectly. I just need to hear the first 30 seconds of this album and it's just making me instantly happy because it's like, well, I think it's the perfect song. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this, but I know I can't needle drop it because um, otherwise my video will get restricted because I had uh, it in the background of my um, exhibition video. So I'm not going to needle drop it, but I'm going to link the song uh, so you can just hear it if you're not familiar with it. It's just, it's a classic, a masterpiece and it should be in every collection, I think. We were recently watching a film called uh, Loving Vincent. Uh, this is the soundtrack for it. Uh, this movie completely blew me away. Um, it's the first movie that was completely hand-drawn. The movie is uh, 94 minutes long and every frame is hand-painted. So that means it's like uh, 66, 500,000 frames uh, hand-painted by over 100 artists. Um, they were first just um, filming the film and then every frame was hand-painted. Partly in the style of Vincent van Gogh's work. And some flashbacks were painted in another style. Um, the parts where it looks like a Vincent van Gogh painting are always inspired by one particular painting. So the film tells a captivating story about his death and his life and it was just so, so beautiful. I was sitting in the cinema and getting goosebumps because it was just such an intense film um, and you just were marveling at the screen and thinking like Oh my god, everything is hand painted and it looks just amazing. If you ever come across this film in your theater near you, just go check it out because I think it's a really nice experience. And the soundtrack uh, instantly caught my attention, so I just had to get it. And here you can see this is kind of the style of the movie. The soundtrack is made by Clint Mansell, who was also responsible for the Requiem for a Dream soundtrack. This is a bit classical, but I would say it's mostly ambient. 
and it creates an incredible dark and haunting atmosphere um, which is just amazing and ah yeah here you can see uh, the other style this is just this is hand painted and I mean it's just like whoa um, this were like flashbacks into Vincent's life were always painted in this uh, black and white style and yeah I'm going to see the movie again um, next week because it's just it blew my mind and what I love about this record is I'm not a fan of colored vinyl but I think this goes uh, pretty well because it's just like this sunflower yellow and yeah Vincent was just known for painting also this uh, sunflower so it's just a nice uh, touch to it and yeah I can just highly recommend it and I'm going to do some media drop so you can get a feel for it. Entanglements um, released in 2017 over International Anthem Recordings. Um, excellent free jazz album made by uh, Kamai Ayea, uh, who's doing some spoken word stuff. Uh, Kia Noring on saxophone, Achilles Navarro on trumpet, Luke Stewart on double bass, and Cesar Holmes on drums. Um, this is definitely another favorite of mine uh, of 2017. Was not included in my list because I just got this, I think, in around the middle of December, so I did not have that much time to play it. Um, but it's a terrific record. Um, it's great free jazz, really intense, um, compelling, and political. Um, a lot of spoken word stuff on here. Um, yeah, I will link the Bandcamp link below so um, you can check it out and do some needle drops. Thank you. 
next one is a first press of Quintessence in Blissful Company, released in 1969, all the island records. Uh, this was one record I bought in Utrecht on the uh, biggest record fair. Had it, <laughs> had it on my want list for a while. Um, yeah, with this cool thing. Love the artwork here. It's a great blend out of uh, psychedelia, uh, jazz and Indian music and playing in the back and yeah. Pretty sure a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, great album. Just hearing music, what do you think when this was released? Right, in 2016. And it's a German band in the private press and has one of the best covers ever. To quote Big Lebowski, nice moment. Yeah, I think it's just sitting there cross legged. What the effing hell? And I'm not sure what this should mean, but whatever. This is uh, Sir Robin and the Longbow Man. Self-titled album released in 2016, uh, not on label, it's a private press, available on Bandcamp. Limited to uh, 400 copies. Um, I will link the Bandcamp link below because amazingly this is not sold out yet, uh, but uh, I'm pretty sure when this is gone it will get really pricey because it's just a perfect psychedelic album. Fuzzy, psychedelic garage music, uh, really hypnotic, the uh, start with the harp is awesome, great lyrics and um, yeah, just more reminiscent and of the hazy um, 60s, 70s psychedelia, not so much new psych, but uh, it really evokes the feel of um, the great time of psychedelic rock and yeah. Absolutely love this. The band is from Germany, from Dresden, and they seem to have a great humor. Um, their uh, Facebook page has the most funniest um, parts on it, and uh, I read an interview where they were asked why they were calling themselves the Robin and the Longbow Man, and they were like, they had the feeling that Robin, one of the band members, was the only person that uh, could play properly, and so he deserved the Sir. And the rest was like the longbow man thing.
Today uh, Marcos Valle Previsao Lo Tempo um, Originally released in 1973 This is a uh, light in the attic repress and this was the last Marcos Valle record that was missing in my collection um, Great MPB with some really breezy and funky vibes He's playing here with people who are later members of Azimut and yeah this was on my OnePlus for quite a while. The Light in the Attic repress because the other album is so so hard to get. And um, I think the Light in the Attic pressing was from 2010 or something like that. But it was always around like 40 to 50 euros which I thought was pretty high. And thankfully uh, at the end of 2017 Light in the Attic decided to repress this. And uh, so I just instantly got it. and. Um, the price is getting pretty high again, so uh, if you find a copy of this, just get it. Light Nyetic does an amazing job and uh, it sounds great. And uh, yeah, it's not my favorite Marcos Valle, I have to admit, but it's just an incredibly funky, laid back album. Which reminds me of Summer, which I would absolutely love to have, so yeah, it's a great thing to play. <laughs> Tira a mão do meu ombro, não sou teu irmão. Eu não quero mais papo, vê se tira a mão. Okay, that's it for today for the records. On to the contest drawing. Um, I want to thank all the people that participated and made entries, uh, which was really fun to watch. And um, I still cannot believe I got 1000 subscribers right now. I'm almost close to 1400, which is absolutely amazing. And yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for entering. It was really fun to see uh, which uh, records mattered the most to you last year. And uh, I was reading the names uh, of the people participating last time. There were other people uh, participating. I forgot to mention Dean, uh, Grandma's handbag, uh, who had participated. And after my last video, merely Chris, Dolphin Dale, and Mr. Fame Brandon um, participated. So. That makes uh, 25 people, which is absolutely impressive. I have a few people who do not do videos, uh, just mentioning their albums, which they liked in 2017, in the comments. And this got me thinking, because it's a subscribers contest, so just a small fraction of my subscribers does videos themselves. And uh, so I thought uh, I would like to include the comments, but um, I decided that a video entry is just counting more, it's counting double, so uh, if you made a video, your name is twice in the head. Four people who did comments are also in the pot, but just one time, so um, you have a double chance to win if you made a video, but I also wanted to honor the people who uh, just comment and comment every time and are subscribed and do not videos themselves, so yeah. So I just put out all the names, it's like... Now it's 54 uh, tickets here, because the videos count double, and yeah. And um, I will put them in this bag. It's one of the day bag, which I really love. Um, great artwork, I think. So I will put all the tickets in the bag and give it a good shake and see who wins. Okay. And the first name is... Richard Riley. Congratulations, you will get a coffee painting. Okay, second name is Mike 
Motorik247, um, Alex I think is his name, uh, a channel I just stumbled across because he did a video entry and instantly subscribed because um, yeah, he has great content and amazing selection of records. Um, I will link his uh, channel below so you can check him out because yeah, it's a cool thing. I'm getting the feeling it's like Star Wars Spinning Greek always gets European uh, winners and I seem to get always like winners in the States or something like that. So yeah, I think that's just equality. <laughs> okay, and the last one is... Oh fuck. Yeah, now I have two. Okay. Well. Um, okay, let's just look. It's James Battery. James did an absolutely great entry. Um, he knows I'm a really big uh, Lord of the Rings fan and James uh, is living in New Zealand and he was filming his contest entry in the Hobbit Hole. The one in the first film where they get off the road because uh, the rider is following them and he filmed his entry there. It was like awesome thing and so yeah, well deserved James uh, that you get an entry but that's like peep two people for the third place, which is a mess, but um, I'm pretty sure I will think of something. Feel stupid getting the name back, so yeah. Let's see who's the fourth prize. I just do the fourth prize, why, why not? So yeah, whatever. <laughs> I will think of something. And the last one is Brandon, Mr. Her Fame. That's cool, because uh, I think he has participated also in both contests I made yet, so yeah, Brandon, you are the accidental fourth winner. Um, I will think of something which uh, I can send you. Uh, it would be great if you three poor people, uh, Richard, um, Alex, and James, and Brandon, if you could contact me, give me your address, and yeah, then I will send you something. And Richard, just uh, tell me what artist you want to have painted. Um, I'm really looking forward to that and really intrigued to see what you're going to pick. And you will get the coffee painting. Uh, great. So it's actually like three people in the States and one in New Zealand. Post office will love me. Uh, yeah, well, sorry for all the other people who didn't win. Uh, thank you so much for participating. It was so fun to see all the entries. So that's it for today. Thank you for entering the contest, for viewing my video, subscribing, commenting and everything. Uh, I really appreciate that and uh, it was so fun to do it. And yeah, thank you so much and see you soon. Bye.